Praise the Lord. Nice to be back in the presence of God. One of the reasons why we have three times chapel at New Life School of Mission is to make each and every one of you to grow in the Lord. To make him understand a little more better than what you know about him yesterday. I personally believe it's as much as we attempt to understand God, there is still some more remaining for us to understand Him. There is no completeness of understanding Him. Understanding Him. It takes our life. In other words, until and unless we see Jesus face to face, we have to keep on knowing about Him and understanding Him. Amen. Amen. And that is the re one of the reasons why we have three times chapel in a day at New Life School of Mission. It's important that all of us should be able to grow. We can never be satisfied saying that I'm done. No, we should be able to keep on growing in Him, understanding Him, and so that we will be able to be a better worshippers, a better servers, a better communicators, a better servants, a better people for God and His kingdom. Amen. And what a great joy for us to set up what one of the chapels called Missionary Chapel. And I'm sure that we do remember all the New Life School of Mission graduates who are, who are already in the mission field. We do pray for them and we intercede for them. And then at the same point, you also should be able to understand, once you graduate from here, we do continue to pray for you. Amen. And therefore, if you forget to pray about the graduates of New Life School of Mission, somebody will be forgetting you to pray. Okay. So therefore, never forget to pray. And in these missionary chapels, we are looking into one thing, man of God, woman of God, child of God. Becoming a man of God is an important aspect because we are called to be living episodes to the dying world. If we want to be living episodes, we should be able to be what? Children of God, man of God, and the word of God very, very clearly identifying or expecting that we need to be called as a man of God. And we are still hanging on on point number one, if you and me would like to be called as a man of God, it is understood by the things which we flee from, run from, get rid of, get rid of from. So it is important where are, what are the things which we need to live in our lives so that we will be able to be called as man and woman of God. And we already looked into several references in the scriptures. And uh, I do not want to go back to that. But the Bible says, flee from sexual sin. Flee from idolatry. Flee, flee from youthful lust. In the last chapel, we remembered, we looked back into Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 8. And then this morning, as I was looking into the same chapter again, from verses 1 to 9, it's almost like 12 times up. So Paul is reminding to the church in Colossians saying that it is you, it is you, it is you who need to make the decision. It is Christ who saved us, but it is your decision to follow him. It is Christ who has given us this life, but it is your decision to say, Abba, Father, I want to follow you. It is God who created you with a great plan and purpose. And as today as we have heard, God has given you a vision. God has given you a, 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 a very clear understanding why God wanted you to be here. After understanding that, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? You should be able to run from the things which are not acceptable to God. Which are not pleasing to God. Even we should never allow such thought pattern to be entertained in, my, in, in our mind. It is we ourselves should be able to put those things to death. Not somebody else. It's you who understood the call of God in your life. It is you who understood the very purpose God intended to call you and me as a man and woman of God. 
Wow! If you understand that, I'm sure that we will come to a point that we ourselves will make a point that we will not do the things which God is not accepting. And this morning, as, as I woke up, I woke up at 4 o'clock every day, 4.10 is my time. 4.10 I just get up from the bed because 4.30 is our morning prayer in our church. You come at 5 o'clock, I'll be there in the church at 4.30, man. Half an hour early than you. Okay? So don't think, oh, our director sir, will be sleeping until 6 o'clock. No, you are there in the chapel at 5 o'clock. I'm in the chapel at 4.30. Okay? So whatever. As I woke up, I was just remembered about the life of Saul. That's right. Mm -hmm. life, uh, life of Saul. Where then I just thought about from 1 Samuel chapter 15 where Apostle, uh, where uh, Saul's life is uh, very much clearly explained to us because God told King Saul, the first king of people of Israel to kill, remove all the Amalekites. Is it not? And all those who re read the Bible understand or remember this incident which has happened. God told, hey Saul, I remember what happened as the people of Israel were moving from Egypt to the promised land. And these people were always trying to block you. And I'm sure that Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 following where we will be able to see as they have come to uh, the Amalekites and these people said no you cannot move and there was a war between the people of Israel and the Amalekites and we know also the incident where, uh, where Moses was lifting up his hand where they were able to receive victory and when his hands were tired and when he was putting down the Amalekites were receiving victory and then we know with the support of Hur and Aaron, the, the hands of Moses was lifted up and they received victory. And then God remembered and God told Moses saying that, hey, put it, keep it in your memory that one day I'm going to eliminate, eradicate, destroy, remove the whole of Amalekites from the history. Wow. What a great promise, is it not? He will never allow his enemies to prosper against his children. And then the, the time has come where God has to fulfill the promise. And the Bible says God has anointed Saul as the king and told Saul, Hey, the time has come for me to fulfill my promise to the people of Israel. Therefore, you go along with, the, with your army and destroy everything what you see. Verse 3 of chapter 15 of 1 Samuel. It says, Now go and attack Amalekai, Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey, everything. And the Bible says, He went. But what did He do? What did He do? He did not do what God wanted him to do. He was thinking to spare some good fat animals. He was, he was willing to spare even the king of King Agag. And the Bible, I mean, when I was reading that this morning, I thought when the King Agag was spared of his life maybe his wives and children and those servants who are working with him and a group of people along with Ada who was also spared is it not so it is not just one person God told to destroy everything what is there in Amalek, Amalek. but the Bible says Samuel Roman, Saul went there and spared few things as a result what happened I'm not going to the point of what he did, but I, I just want to take, take your thoughts to the point to tell that what has happened. Amalekai is the person who killed even Saul. Is it not? Because the Bible says again in 2 Samuel chapter 1, 
verse chapter 1 verse David is trying to inquire about how did Saul die and there comes a young man with a report saying that sir I know about it how do you know it is I who killed what, a, what, what happened he said as I was just coming back from the war field I saw Saul already on his deathbed he has put his spear and he's fallen upon that and he's already on his deathbed and but he's, he did not die and therefore he told me hey come along here I am already about to die but the, the, the fall which I have fallen did not kill me completely therefore kill me looking at his situation this young man the Bible says he killed him and removed his crown and removed everything what the king wears and then he brought it to David he killed and then David is asking hey who are you he said I'm an Amalekite and then I, we understand that David after lamenting for Saul and his son he killed him why an Amalekite has to kill Saul because God told him to clean it up but what did God what did Saul do what did Saul do? He spared it out. Hello? You want to be a man of God? You want to be a child of God? You want to be the reflector of God? You yourself should be able to put things which are not acceptable to God put to death. Don't try to hide things. Don't say, oh, if I don't keep on saying lies, uh, I cannot really survive. Say small sins. And that's what Apostle Paul says in Hebrews chapter 12. We should be able to get rid of all easily entangled sins. Because for us, sin is only when we steal, maybe we go and may, maybe we, we steal a bank or maybe when we kill somebody or maybe or when we commit adultery or maybe when we commit fornication or some I think only such things we consider sin and therefore Apostle Paul says you should be able to get rid of the things which easily entangles you what it is it's not really big things because sometimes we think only big things, big things are sin. No, but the Bible says even small things which are not acceptable to God is sin. We should be able to understand that because whether you loot a bank or whether you steal a hundred rupees or even a ten rupees, you are called as what? As a thief. There is no different title. Because you have looted only the bank, therefore you are called thief. Because you have taken stolen 100, 10 rupees from somebody, you are called by different name. There is only one name called thief. So sin is sin. Whether it is a big one or a small one, that is enough for you to be hindered, to be called as a man of God. So we should be able to understand that as God is holy, we are ought to be holy. In all of our conduct, the Bible says. It's important, my young boy and girl, you should be able to understand this important aspect, doctrine, thing, a principle which God is giving to us. Do you want to be called as a man of God? You should be able to flee from the things which are not acceptable to God. Don't ever think that this is okay. No, it's not okay. I think in your Hamad theology class you have at least seven or eight definitions of sin. And one of the definitions is if you know what is good and don't do that good is sin. Hello? I repeat again, if you know that this is good and you don't do that good thing, you are committing sin. What it means? It means when the work is assigned for you to do that 
properly and when you don't do that one and the Bible says you're committing sin. And those are the things which are called as easily entangled sins. Because we always think those sins are not at all sins. And especially young people, you may have a lot of uh, think, thoughts which you may think that's okay. I'm a young person and therefore this kind of thoughts will come into my mind. The Bible says, man, you should be able to flee out, flee from those sins. Do not allow Satan to entertain such thoughts into your mind. Because what you think is what you do. So I don't want you to keep on entertaining the thoughts of Satan inside you. Saul thought it's okay. What is there? Even if we, because again, I'm sure that all of you remember when Samuel the prophet got the message from the Lord and then when early morning when he's coming back, he said, Oh man of God, I have done what the Lord told me to do. Is it not? And many times we also say the same things like that. Oh, I'm a Bible college student. I'm a faculty. I'm a Bible college teacher. And therefore we think all what we try to do is okay. And Saul, even of not doing what God is expecting him to do, but now he comes to a point and says, I have done what the Lord wanted me to do. Be careful, church of God. Be careful. That is enough for you and me to lose the blessings of God. And I'm normally the youngsters uh, in the youth meetings, we normally perform a skit. Is it not put a chair saying that the big paper we stick it saying sin? And then somebody will go then go there and sit upon it and unable to come out. Remember the skit? Yes, sir. I think last year some of you have done even in this chapel. So therefore, many attempts are there, but at last only the word of God or the servant of God or Jesus will come and help him to get rid of that sin. And this morning I want to remind you as we sit in the missionary chapel, if you want to be a man of God, it is important that we should be able to identify ourselves only when we run from the things which are not acceptable to the world. Don't ever think that is okay. I repeat again, don't ever think that is okay. If God is expecting us to do something according to your word, that's it. You and me do not have any right to change the word or the principles of the word. We are called only to simply do what God wanted us to do. And even that is the reason why the word has been given to us. And that is the reason the word needs to be stored in our hearts. For what? So that the word will take control of our lives. The word will take control of what we think, of what we see, of what we talk, of what we and where we sit and what where we stand, with what kind of friends we have. Who will decide? It's not me who decides. It is the word which need to decide. Because this word has been given to us to be called as man of God. Don't be like Saul. Don't ever think for yourself saying, it is okay. It's not okay. And therefore the Bible very clearly says we should be able to, able to rebuke the Satan and he will flee from us. When? When he will flee? Only when you rebuke. Hello? If you don't rebuke, what will happen? He will start doing a lot of entertainment within our mind. And sometimes that entertainment of thought is enough for us to keep on enjoying. And the Bible says that's, it, that's enough for you to destroy or lose the relationship which you have with God. Be careful of what kind of, what kind of preachings today we are preaching and what kind of preachings we are hearing today. 
because there are lots of people today even in the television they start preaching saying that if you, once if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior that's it rest of the things all what you want to do you can still enjoy my Bible never says that please you heard me saying that once when you born again Christian you and me are bounded with the boundaries of the word of God before coming to Christ you are a free bird you can do whatever you feel to do but once when you are in Christ you and me have a boundary there is a boundary for what we need to talk hello there is a boundary for what we need to talk I always encourage people not to talk unnecessary things about anybody because that is waste of time and then through that we will become a king said is it not so let us not talk about somebody else why we want to talk about somebody else it's important that we should be able to look into ourselves is it not that's what Jesus said you don't look at the plan which you have in your eyes but you try to find out expect in somebody's eyes that is what today the Christianity is trying to do and that is the reason why we have lost our testimony Mahatma Gandhi said if every Indian Christian can live as the Sermon on the Mount teachings of Jesus Christ India will be one as Christurachi as the kingdom of Christ but why that is not happening is simply because we cannot we do not it's not that we cannot but we do not if you ask if you take the help of the Holy Spirit he will help us to live a holy life he will help us to live a, a, a life which God wanted us to do he will and that is the reason why the Holy Spirit has been sent into this world we know for what he has been sent into this world so that he will convict us of sin righteousness and judgment and it is important my friends that we should ask the Holy Spirit to convict us always not just when we are in the chapel not just when we were just came to a born again experience no you should be able to come to that experience and say Holy Spirit God you start convicting me always of what? sin righteousness and judgment because we are living in a sinful world if we don't have the convicting work of the Holy Spirit what will happen? what will happen? we will be trapped into this world we will be fallen into this world and then we will be able to say trying to start justifying ourselves and say that's okay but if we allow the Holy Spirit to convict us he will give us the command as a commander in chief about our, our lives he will always give us a command what ought to be done what is expected from him so that we will be able to live a victorious way then we will be worthy to be called as a man of God of righteousness sometimes the things what we expect from God or maybe even coming, coming to the point maybe God has given us a promise and that promise sometimes get delayed and therefore what will happen we will just lose our hope we will think maybe God has forgotten maybe we will think oh maybe that's 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 that I heard it wrong no, if the Holy Spirit is there, he will say, hey, the God whom you serve is a righteous God. He will never fail you. He will definitely wait for his time. He will bring those things to accomplishment. He will bring those things into fulfillment, my friends. I can tell you several stories in my life, incidents happen in my life because the, sometimes the things will never happen as we ask immediately. Maybe we need to wait for one year, two years, three years, four years. We 
we have to wait for this campus almost for nine years. It did not automatically, automatically came at ninth hour or ninth week or ninth month. We have to keep on continually praying, praying, praying. One year, three years, four years, five years, eight years, nothing happened. But what we should do? We should keep on believing in God because He is righteous. Hello? He is righteous. He will never fail you. He will never forget you. If God has given you a word of prophecy when you were maybe five years, ten years old, don't ignore it, man. He will still remember because God's time did not come yet. I always say God's time is, do you know at what time? When God says 11 o'clock, it's not at 10.59 minutes. When He said 11 o'clock, it's exactly 11 o'clock. Or it's not even 11 one minute. That is our human way of understanding the things. But you should be able to understand as my God is a God of righteousness. Do you know what happens? When He set a time for your life, He will fulfill the time. In that time. And I always like that. In His time. I sing that song several times. Because I like that. He will make all things beautiful. beautiful. But what we need to do? We need to have patiently wait for His time. When we are living in a situation where we are so much hurry and worry, who, who, whom we need? We need the help of the Holy Spirit because He will tell you, Hey, the God whom you serve is a God of righteousness. He will never leave you. He will fulfill what he has promised. So don't hear negative words from the people, from your situation, from your friends, from the things, wherever you are going. But hear from God because he is righteous. And that is the reason you need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, do you know what it is? It is the judgment. What we have? Judgment. judgment. Today in the Christian world, forget that there is a judgment. Therefore, what they do? They don't give the hearing here to hear God's word properly. They will take things so lightly. They take things so casually. They say, Jalega, no problems. Baba, there is a day of judgment for us. And the Bible very clearly says that day he will judge us. Not graciously, compassionately. But he the judge like a judge. Hello, everybody got the point? Today we have grace, today we have mercy, today we have compassion. But the day when he sits on the throne to judge us, do you know what happens? There is no more grace, no more mercy, no more compassion. If you forgot that, remember this morning the Holy Spirit is reminding you those things. All Things of forgiveness is now not at the time of judgment. If we want to remember that, we need the work of the Holy Spirit to convict us. And this morning, as we conclude this missionary chapter, I want to let you know, my friends, we should be able to get rid of things. Who need to get rid of things? You yourself. Saul was given the responsibility to destroy what ought to be destroyed. But he said, that's okay. Let me spare some things. And what he spared is the one who killed him. Hello? Maybe you are hiding some things. That could be the reason that would or that would become the reason for you to see the closed doors of heaven for you. And therefore, never ignore the voice of God. Never neglect the voice of God. Allow yourself to come hundred percent without any conditions into the hand of the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit God, convict me of sin, of righteousness and judgment.
so that we will be able to be called the man of God, the woman of God. So that the people outside will be able to understand that Christ is the reason for our existence and for the ministry, whatever we are able to do in this world. Because people are looking for genuine people who will be able to reflect their God. And I want that I want to be that person. Do you want to be that person? Every eyes to be closed in the presence of God. Shall we all stand in the Lord's presence as we conclude this missionary chapter? Lord, we want to thank you for your presence. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for the reminder. And we want to thank you also for the appointment which you have granted to us to be the man of God. A child of God. Though the title has been given to us, we know that it, it, it doesn't automatically stay with us. We ourselves should be able to do willingly, without any conditions, we should be able to surrender ourselves. Then only there will be a greater blessing for us. For that marvelous purpose, above we surrender before your throne of grace. Help each and every one of us to come under the absolute control of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, which you have sent to be with us always, so that we will be able to be according to your call upon our lives. We thank you for the reminder and thank you for accepting us. Take all glory, honor and praise and thanks because we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.